So we're in for some really chilly weather over the next few days and then it's going to warm up a little bit and get a lot windier. And so that's quite a lot of different weather conditions for us gardeners to manage. And you combine that with the fact that it's really sunny as well. And so I'll just talk you through how I'm going to approach that. And the first thing is in the polytunnel. Now polytunnels don't really keep in much heat. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think by about 10 o'clock at night, they're pretty much the same temperature as it is outside. And so you can't really um, depend on a polytunnel to keep your veggies frost free. Uh, especially if it's going to get down to minus six or something like that. So I think last night in the polytunnel, it was minus 1.8. I'm expecting it to get down to about minus six uh, tomorrow or the day after. So in order to protect things in here, I'm going to need fleece. Now I've got fleece here. You can see it's all ready uh, to lay down. It only takes me a couple of minutes to put it down and take it up again. And I've got another video that I'll link in the description about how I put that fleece up um, and the kind of benefits of fleecing and things like that. So I won't repeat all that here. What I will say is though that all of these veggies, all of these um, lettuces and spring onions and things like that, the parsley and all that, onions, garlic, etc., that are in here, none of those are going to mind a frost at all. They're all completely hardened off. They've withstood many frosts over the, over the last, um, few months and the only thing that's going to happen is there'll be a little bit of a check in the growth rate. I don't want to check in the growth rate so I fleece them and I'm hoping to keep this frost free. Now the other thing is I've got a lot of stuff in here that is fairly young and so there's lots of calabrese and cauliflowers and radishes and turnips and things and those have only been planted for you know, in some cases a month down to a few days and so those are not fully hardened up and so actually fleecing those is a little bit more important and I've got potatoes in here they're completely tender so if you don't protect them from frost then they're going to die um, and in fact some of those did get a little bit of frost burn on them because I only put a single layer of fleece down which isn't enough for potatoes really so I've got some thick fleece blankets that I'm actually going to put one of those over the potatoes and they should be fine with that I'm also going to take everything off the shelves. So I've got quite a few shelves here with um, uh, Calabrese and things like that on there. They're my spares. And so if I lose any of the ones outside, I'm going to get those and put those under the fleece. I've got some ochre in containers here. If those freeze, then that really damages the tubers. Uh, so you know, I'm going to make sure they're under the fleece as well. And that's pretty much it for the polytunnel. Now, what I've also got is quite a lot of young calabrese and cauliflowers and Brussels sprout plants and things like that outside under low tunnels and coal frames. And they are also going to need an extra layer of fleece. I'm going to lay that underneath the, um, the coal frames and the low tunnels and they should be fine with that. So that extra layer should keep them quite happy. And again, the only real reason I've got to do that is because they're young plants. They've not been fully hardened off. If they'd been planted a month ago, then I probably wouldn't bother with that extra protection. But for something that's only been planted for three or four days, just a bit of extra protection makes all the difference. Now, it's also worth pointing out that it's really sunny at the moment. And so nothing that I've got is closed up. It was closed up last night. I came down here this morning and I... I've only vented it by about an inch and the reason I've done that is because I want them to get lots of warmth during the day, I want them to get maximum amount of sunlight um, but then uh, what I don't want them to do is to get exposed to that wind because the wind chill at the moment is still below zero and so by keeping them just with an inch of vent they won't get too hot because that's the, it's windy enough to sort of keep the air circulating nicely in there, but they won't get exposed to any wind chill. So I'm pretty pleased with all those. I'm pretty confident that everything's going to be fine uh, over this chill. And actually I think things are going to benefit because, well, the outside beds, you know, everything in there, none of that mines having a frost. The um, the benefit really is a frost at this time of year almost always means it's really sunny and I want things to grow. So we actually didn't, haven't been harvesting salads, for example, for the last two weeks. 
and we actually harvested them yesterday so that's the first salad harvest um, for two weeks and normally we, we like to have salad for two weeks of the year um, or pretty much 365 days of the year so you know just a two week break for us is quite a blow um, but now growth is picking up and with all this nice sunshine this week uh, hopefully if I keep things above freezing lots of sunshine quite a lot of warmth I'm gonna get pretty good growth this week and so I should be eating salads for uh, going onwards now also I've got to bring a lot of crops to maturity in the polytunnel uh, before I plant the tomatoes and so I really want nice sunny weather in February in order to really kickstart the growth of those it really does make all the difference and um, you know because I really am up against it you know I, I'm trying to get all these crops to maturity by the middle of um, May so that I can plant polysol again in late May and if I can't do that and I've still got lots of cauliflowers and calabrese and turnips and whatever and beetroot that have not quite got to maturity then it means kind of either sacrificing those plants or sticking my tomatoes in bigger pots and all of that and I don't really want to be messing around like that so um, yeah I am kind of fingers crossed for good weather in February just to get things kick started we normally have a great March and April here so provided everything goes to plan then that should be fine um, outside it's not so much of an issue although I have got a few critical timings um, but uh, yeah so I think that's pretty much everything I've done I've got everything ready um, I'm just out on the walk actually I'm going out into the countryside and uh, maybe on my way back I'll come and close up and fleece up either that or I'll pop back later in the afternoon as I said we're only about a mile away from the allotment site so it's really no hassle to walk here so um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this quick video my name is Steve this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.